Good morning, happy Wednesday. I have my coffee. I hope you have your coffee because today we're talking about coffee and weight loss. I want to know, um, are you watching this with me live today? Are you watching it on the replay? And what is your summer looking like? What do you have coming up this summer? Do you have a lot of trips? Do you have a lot of things going on? I get to go to Nashville next week for a friend's wedding, so I'm excited about that. But other than that, we don't have any major trips this summer. As you can see, different background. We moved into our house, so a lot of this summer is going to be doing things around the house and getting ready just to have it all ready to go and you know really embracing it and enjoying it but today we are talking about coffee and weight loss this is a long debated topic and i hear people all the time saying like oh man i have to give up my starbucks i have to give up my dunk and i have to give up my coffee in order to be successful and that is not the case at all so what why coffee what's up with coffee what's the story with coffee in general so you might see Oftentimes on um, the news or social media, coffee's good and then it's bad and it can be helpful for some and helpful for others. It all depends on our genes, our genetic makeup and how we um, respond to it. Some people can metabolize coffee really fast, the caffeine in it, some people can't. So that's why caffeine sensitivity is very different between person to person. Some people can have one cup of coffee and feel wired for the day. Some people have a cup of coffee and they feel nothing and that's why they keep drinking more and more of it. So it all comes down to our genes. Now, coffee in itself, is basically a calorie free beverage. How it works is that they roast up the beans, you know, depending on how much they roast, it depends on the caffeine level. Lightly roasted beans or a light roast um, or a blonde roast, as Starbucks calls it, usually has less or more caffeine in it, excuse me, because roasting it can um, deactivate some of the caffeine in there. So the light roast is going to have more caffeine, the dark roast is gonna have less caffeine, but coffee in itself is not bad for us at all. If anything, it's actually a little bit of a stimulant. It can, especially when you first start to drink it, increase your metabolism, increase your heart rate, increase your blood pressure, which causes a higher calorie burn for us. Maybe it averages out to an extra 50 calories a day. Not enough to be like, this is the miracle thing, just drink coffee all day long. So coffee in itself is not bad. For some people, it's actually been shown to be heart, or protective for our hearts and everything as well. What the one issue with our coffee can be that can impact our weight loss journey is what we put in our coffee. So that means if you are someone who likes your coffee really light and sweet, you're adding a lot of sugar, which can cause more insulin to be released, which can cause increased fat storage. You're adding more calories, which can then put you over what you're burning for the day, which can then cause weight gain. And it can add more fat into your diet as well too. So it matters less about the coffee itself. It matters more about what you put into it. On our first call with Signature Nutrition Coaching clients, we often say to them and ask them, you know, what do you put in your coffee? How much cream do you put in there? And they're like, oh, I don't know, maybe a couple tablespoons. We challenge our clients every single time to say, go and measure it. I want you to go and I want you to measure how much cream that you put in your coffee and see what that translates out to. Because you might think you're only putting a couple tablespoons in, but you're actually putting in a fourth of a cup. That's what happened to me when I was in college. I thought I wasn't using that much until my roommate was like, Emily, we are going through this creamer so fast. How much cream do you put in your coffee? I measured it. I was putting in a fourth of a cup of the non-dairy creamer into my coffee and I was like, oh my God, that's literally like six servings. Literally like six servings. So at that point I changed. I put like a fourth of a cup of milk in my coffee first, then I do a tablespoon or two of the um, creamer so that it's lightly sweet but more so creamy. So that's one of the little hacks that I use to cut down on my creamer usage overall. Um, but measuring what you're adding to your coffee is just gonna help with that awareness of how much is in there and what you're doing. So start to measure those things. Create that awareness. Say, okay, how much am I actually putting into my coffee or am I just putting it in there like free ball and pouring it in whatever it is. So creating that awareness knowing that maybe we want to limit some of the sugary things that we're adding into our coffee. I try to have one, two at the absolute most cups of coffee a day. I put my creamer in there. Like I said, I put my milk in there, but I try not to go beyond that. That is because coffee can also give us that false sense of thirst being quenched when it's not really quenching our thirst, especially with the caffeine, it is a diuretic. That's why we need our water bottles. That's why you should always have your water bottle with you too. You should be eating breakfast before you have your coffee. And you should also be drinking water before you have your coffee to make sure that you're getting all of that good nutrients that's actually going to help you um, in before you start having that coffee, which then can give you that false sense of satiety and fullness, 
which is not going to help you with your goals in the long term, long run. If we're feeling full and satiated, but we really haven't had anything nutrition wise, you're probably going to end up having cravings and really high hunger levels as the day goes on. So drinking your water first, having your breakfast first is going to be a huge help with getting the most out of your coffee for energy wise, but then also just nutrition overall too. So having the water, having your breakfast first. Now, when you are going out to get coffee, ask the people when you are ordering, how many pumps of you know caramel swirl do you put in? See if you can do it one less because chances are they're probably putting four, five, six pumps of that stuff in. And with each pump, it's gonna be more added sugar in that time. And you really want to limit that added sugar. It can cause extra stress on the body as well too. So if we can limit that added sugar, if we can say, all right, let's bring it down a little bit. We don't need that much in there. Let me try it with one less. Another hack that you can do as well too, just to save calories and still be able to enjoy it, go down a size. So often will we just order this venti iced coffee or whatever it is, and we never really finish it. And then it's like, all right, well, I didn't need 300 calories worth of iced coffee today. When you could have had a really solid snack in that place, and you probably would have felt more energized from that too. So see if you can go down a size in your coffee as well. And then trying different things on the menu. Remember the simpler things are probably going to be the most nutritionally balanced for you. If you're getting a frappuccino at Starbucks, there's really no caffeine in there. I used to work at Starbucks when I was in college and I remember people coming in being like, oh man, I need coffee. I'm going to get a frappuccino. Literally, it's that much coffee that's in a frappuccino. That much. I, mean, I kid you not. That's how much coffee is in a frappuccino. So if you're actually going to get energy, you might as well just get the coffee in itself and keep it simple rather than doing this really extravagant blended beverage or whatever it is. So Keeping it simple, going down a size, knowing, especially if you're making your coffee at home, knowing what you're putting into it and how much you're putting into it is going to be a huge help with making sure that we're not going overboard, we're not over serving ourselves, and that we're able to account for the calories that are coming in from our coffee every single day too. Is coffee going to be a hinder to your weight loss? No, it is not. Coffee can absolutely be a healthy and balanced part of your routine and your lifestyle, but it's all about the frequency. It's all about the style that you're taking your coffee and what you're adding to it. So coffee, black coffee is not going to hurt you, but if you go and you get, let's say, venti iced coffees every single day or venti iced frappuccinos every single day, that's adding a lot of added sugar and a lot of fat, which can then cause weight gain. So thank you so much for watching. Tonight at 7.30 is our June Masterclass Summer Nutrition Success. I'm so excited. I put the finishing touches on the PowerPoint today. I am so excited about it. This is an absolutely free masterclass where we are diving into how to make this summer the healthiest and most confident summer for you yet. So if you're interested in joining that, I will drop the link down in the comments below. It is absolutely free. If you cannot make it live, you can go back and watch it replay. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and I'll see you next week.